I'm Jan and I will give you a quick demonstration of the Logea Management Console today. For those of you that do not know, Logea is a software as a service that allows you to build your own travel website, use the system as a headless system with the APIs that we provide and manage your accommodations and all the content that you wish to provide on your website. So what you see here is the login window into the Logea Management Console that can be reached through our website. Um, and this allows you to access the Management Console. Just a quick note on the current state of the development. Logea was started a couple of weeks ago and we have had a very fast pace in development so that we are able to really already have a very basic version of the management console. You can find all the details of what this system does in the backend on our website. And uh, today I'll show you the first bits and pieces of where you can manage accommodations, the contents, descriptions, images, and so forth. So I'll log in to the management console with my Microsoft account. And then um, I'll be greeted with the list of accommodations that I already have in my account. I can see over here, I'm in the DMO demo account. Uh, my language is currently English. English. We support English and German at the moment. You can also switch languages if you wish. Um, I'll keep this to English for the sake of this presentation. You'll see your uh, user account as well. Uh, you have a number of options here, including your settings. I won't be going into this because we will be focusing on the management of accommodations and uh, what we call your inventory here. You can see I have created a number of accommodations previously, and these include um, hotels, resorts, um, as well as vacation homes, uh, etc. So. Um, this one, the green bar shows you whether it is active and published to your website or not. The red one indicates that obviously it isn't. Um, let's have a look into this hotel. You can see here we have the main image of the hotel, the name, of course, as well as an, uh, a unique identification, uh, the category it belongs to or multiple categories if it belongs to multiple categories and of course the address of this property. We uh, have a submenu here that allows to uh, navigate to the main information um, that include the name and the URI name and the number of units that this property has, as well as uh, the location, the uh, facility, which includes all the rooms that this uh, hotel has, uh, the, uh, or the room types to be more specific for this uh, specific hotel here. The services it offers, you can see there are no services yet. The multimedia contents, which is uh, mainly the images uh, that this uh, hotel has. Uh, and then as well some policies and this is uh, what I will be showing you in this video. So, starting at the uh, information, you can see uh, the property is not activated. Um, it's not been published to uh, the website. Um, it has a name. Uh, it has a URI which will be used um, for uh, the uh, detail page of the property on your website so that it is search engine optimized. Uh, you have a, a clean UR, a URL for that one. The number of housing units or in uh, this specific case, the number of rooms that this property has, uh, the currency and then of course the description text. Yeah. You can see that um, we have uh, the AI translation that we uh, promote on our website here as well. So if you were to write a different text, um, this is a different text for this hotel. You can then go ahead and translate the new text. Regardless, you can do it in any of the uh, languages and translate this to all other languages. And after a few seconds, it will have automatically translated that to all other languages. So you also see that um, a green bar pops up at the bottom, which means that you haven't saved the property. The way this property management works is that you can apply as many changes as you want, but it will not be immediately saved. So if you make a mistake or anything, you can easily revert back uh, to uh, the previous 
uh, stage um, or previous version by just clicking reload and all your changes are uh, uh, gone and you have uh, the version as it exists in the database. So then we have a couple of other uh, details that you can provide for the property that includes that the property requires the complete address of the guest, the contact number, that there is a minimum stay and all of these configurations that you will need or maybe only might need for certain uh, accommodations. There is a cancellation grace period that you can configure. Um, there is a cancellation grace period before check-in that you can configure the number of stars that the property has, if it has stars. And then of course, the category types. And there you can already see that there is a number of category types that we support all the way from apartments to holiday parks, recreational vehicle parks, um, spas, sailing ships, classic hotels, standard vacation rentals, um, vacation homes, anything that you uh, could imagine. And then the available languages that the property speaks so um, that the guests can expect that there is staff on the property that will support these languages here. And that is pretty much all of the basic information uh, for now. Then we have the location information. We can already see that uh, there are no contacts for the property. I can create new contacts here. So if I have a contact for contract contracting purposes or reservations, I can add that contact here. Um, you don't have to provide a contact and contacts will not be published on your website. This is primarily for you if you have a, a lot of accommodations you can insert all the contacts and you have all the contacts at hand in any sections of Logia so that you can see, okay, who is in charge, who do I need to contact if I have a problem with this reservation in this property. Then attractions and other places, you can also add um, uh, certain things in the area, saying there is a restaurant in the area and um, you can enter that restaurant here. The distance to the restaurant, let's say it's 300 meters and then you have a new restaurant, you click on save, and then that property is updated and the restaurant is uh, stored in the property. Then we have the uh, geographical data that is automatically uh, determined by the artificial intelligence based on the data that you provide up here. So if you provide at least an address line, a city name, a postal code, or you provide the latitude and longitude, or you provide both of that, then uh, the artificial intelligence will identify the actual geographical data that then also allows uh, you to provide these accommodations on your website in a more structured way. So you don't have to manage all this geographical data or uh, create complex geographical hierarchies. That is all being done here automatically. Next up to the facilities. So we have all the, uh, I can add new room types or uh, housing units, accommodation units, if I wish to. But for this um, hotel, they, uh, I created them previously. You can see this is a single, um, it's called standard. Um, that's the name of the unit. It has a maximum occupancy of two and is, has no text description yet. And that's why you um, also don't see a description up there. Uh, let me just write something. This is the single bedroom and I think it should be maximum occupancy one because it's a single with nice bedding and free Wi-Fi so and then of course as I showed you earlier um, you don't need to go into you can of course translate everything yourself if you want to um, but you can also um, just translate it automatically. And then again, a few seconds, seconds later, uh, all the text is translated automatically. Uh, you can also see that based on the description in here, there's um, a recommendation for an amenity, which in this case is a single bed. So if I click on it, uh, it'll automatically add a single bed to it. So let me just quickly save it. And then you can also see that there is a description over here now. And the same goes pretty much for all the other accommodation units. Then we have the services. You can add multiple services to a hotel um, such as um, uh, wireless internet or Wi-Fi. 
um, and um, practically anything that you could imagine um, that can be added. Yeah. You can also add more extended services such as breakfast. Yeah. If you say breakfast is not included in all rates and it costs five five dollars for example and it's available monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday or say monday uh, through friday from 6 to 11 and then saturday and sunday from 7 to 11 30. so so you can add the opening hours of the uh, breakfast here as well the feature of the breakfast is this uh, buffet breakfast, um, the type of breakfast that is provided, continental breakfast, kosher, halal, Asian, buffet, American, whatever you uh, this uh, property provides. The breakfast items, now this is something special for breakfast mainly, uh, where you can add some items that might be of interest um, for the user um, if they have specific requirements for breakfast. And then you can add it. And you can see there's a breakfast served in a restaurant. There are several other services, pretty much the same as you had seen in the previous uh, window where you could easily just uh, add all the um, services and you have a number of services here as well. So if we go into movie, you can see movies in room, movie nights, um, various internet services, um, yeah, guest room wide internet, and you can add charges for that as well so it's very complex options uh, that can be added here you can add a restaurant um, on-site restaurant just give it a standard name you can enter any fancy name that you would like um, and I you again you can translate uh, the text from any other language so for the sake of the demonstration I'll translate it from German So this is a very nice restaurant. This one says, and of course I'll have the AI translated automatically. And this is a very nice restaurant, just as I said. So opening hours, you can do whatever opening. Say this is only Tuesday to Thursday. It's only from 1600 to uh, 2330. So, uh, and then you can decide this, of course, is only uh, dinner because it's 16 to, uh, to 1130. Um, the cuisine the restaurant offers, um, let's say, it's German hamburgers, if you will. Um, the features of the restaurant, you can add some more, just auto seating, guests only, etc. Just some requirements for the restaurant. Um, these are, again, say, uh, simply for the sake of informing your customer or user about what uh, this restaurant offers, what it doesn't have, etc. And then, of course, the ambience, uh, so let's say it's family and kids friendly. I'm just kind of creating something, um, just have it saved. Of course, you can also define what payment methods uh, the hotel accepts or this property. Let's say this is American Express, then um, just basic MasterCard and Visa. Um, and maybe Germany C copies as German. Uh, um, hotel have it saved and it's saved now off to the multimedia section and that is uh, where it becomes interesting I have uploaded uh, all the images already uh, you can of course add additional images if you wish to just um, decide any image I'll just take some example images uh, drop it in and it'll be uploaded yeah so um, it's straightforward relatively simple to uh, organize all the images here you can of course sort the images if you would like to change the positions the uh, main image is always the first image in this list so if you wish to have this restaurant being the first image you can see it changes immediately um, you can just uh, drag and drop them around yeah all these images have a description so uh, you can add a description which is, which is certainly helpful for uh, search engine optimization. Um, you can add image tags. You can also see here 
uh, these image tags have been identified by the uh, image recognition algorithm that we have. So it already recognizes this is a restaurant, there is food, it's a lounge or bar and all of that. So these tags are assigned automatically. Descriptions are not. So we can maybe look at the pool, see what came here. Yeah, it's a scene that there's actually a pool, it's a swimming pool, etc. So uh, you don't need to go through all the tags yourself. But if you uh, realize that uh, maybe some tags or there are no tags, um, then you can add um, additional tags if you think uh, they are necessary. Yeah. So let me quickly reload the property and you can see the images are still there. And this is the image I just uploaded that is uh, completely un unreloaded, unrelated to um, all the uh, other images I had before. So um, you can see um, I uploaded it maybe 20, 30 seconds before uh, and you can already see it has the text there. Yeah? It has, it has uh, recognized this being a balcony or terrace. It has a garden view. Um, it's off-site. So um, the AI already realized a couple of things about it. So you have the text in here already and can add a nice uh, description. Um, let me do English. Uh, this is our uh, rooftop garden. And then have that translated as well. So you can see is in all these other languages that I defined for this uh, site earlier. Save it again. You can see that uh, the um, services that we have seen earlier reappear here because the AI has some recommendations for property amenities. So it has uh, found some information and recommends some to review these. Uh, th those might not be um, services that exist but they, that are highly likely and you should review this. This just frees you from having to scroll through all these hundreds um, of uh, services and amenities. So and if, you, if I click on plus, then the garden is being added to my property as a service. The same goes for the rooms uh, or accommodation units that we've seen earlier. Um, the same is here. Um, the AI realized this is a bedroom and there is of course a seating area. So um, it recommends uh, adding the uh, sitting area um, service or amenity or feature, if you will, a seating area, a sofa. Um, I think it has also, it also found a TV somewhere. So uh, that could be added, uh, the TV, flat screen TV, widescreen TV, um, bath and shower, of course, uh, it uh, identified the bath. Um, and all these, I don't see a bathtub, so I'll leave that out. And the same goes pretty much for any image. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, it's all the lamp. There's a lamp and a sofa uh, and all of these things. So um, you don't need to uh, go through the long list that I showed you um, a minute before. You can just upload all the images after you have created the uh, accommodation units and then just go through uh, what the AI recommends based on these uh, images. And if you, if you find any services missing afterwards, then of course you can always add them manually. Yeah. Um, you can remove images as well. That's also possible. Um, and I'm before I uh, tap into the policies, I'm going to show you another property where I intentionally uploaded uh, some images. So um, you can see some images are marked with restricted. This is an image of a bottle of wine and a wine glass and it is being rejected uh, for alcoholic beverages and the display of alcohol, which might harm the performance of your website, given that certain search engines or search regions will not allow websites um, that display alcohol or alcoholic beverages. And the same goes, I think, for this one which uh, shows a woman um, climbing out of the swimming pool in swimwear or underwear, again, uh, that is being restricted uh, just to protect the performance and quality of your site. And then, of course, we have an, uh, the, just the uh, regular um, 
regular uh, image tags that the AI detected again here. Uh, same procedure as with the other property. And then I think this property also uh, has a couple of more services added already. It has two restaurants. Yeah, and you can already see uh, the uh, kind of what this restaurant offers. Um, the payment, the same that I sh just showed you, just on a different property here. Um, the location uh, and of course the information. Now off to the policies. You can create policies. They will be added to uh, rates and availability later. So um, this policy section might change during the, de the development of the application now. Um, and you can define the earliest check-in, the latest checkout date, the total number of guests that can stay in this property. This is nothing that is used in the booking process itself or shown to your customer. This is mainly for you to see how, how much capacity does this thing have in total, um, how much bookings have I made and how much of the capacity did I consume. So more or less a reporting uh, uh, a metric for you. The days before uh, arrival from this, this can be booked at the earliest. So if uh, this accommodation can only be booked 400 days before departure, uh, that's the earliest point and the latest point is the day of departure. So if you want uh, properties or rates only to be booked uh, certain days prior to uh, departure, um, then you can configure this one here. Here come in uh, the pet policies. Uh, so you can say pets are allowed or are only possible on request or have a fee. The cancellation policy, um, pre any prepayment policy, if a prepayment is required, guarantee payment policies, um, that you can uh, define until when guaranteed payments are, uh, are to be made. The uh, tax configuration where you can add uh, certain taxes that might apply or not apply in your country or region or uh, the location of the property. Um, and then define whether they're included, not included, what currency they are, whether they're percentage or fixed uh, values per person, per night, per stay. You can configure all of these uh, uh, fee or tax applications. And then we have fees here. We have a parking fee, for example, that I added earlier um, that just defines uh, what parking costs, what type of parking this is, etc. You have an internet fee. If that applies, um, that can also define how it is being charged, what type of internet access that is. And of course, you can always add whatever uh, fee uh, you would like. Say, for example, the ski pass and say that it's not included and has to be paid separately. It only applies to certain units. Um, let's say, for example, the uh, ski pass is included, but only in this suite. Um, and uh, that you can add a price or you just leave it. Uh, I'd say the ski pass costs 89 euros and that is included. Or let's just give it some other currency, don't know. Norwegian crowns. So it's 89 Norwegian crowns and that is um, per person per stay. And then you have another currency of uh, 89 Norwegian crowns. So, and that's it uh, so far for managing all the contents and data. Um, there is some information uh, I haven't gone into here. You have seen that I clicked this button several times, which is the button to update the property. Of course, a button to reload the property, just in case you just made some changes uh, that you did not want to make and you want to just to reload it, or you have changed some data or a colleague is working on it and you just want to reload it. And then, of course, the history. So um, I will be going uh, back into the other property that I worked on and show you the history here, because then you can see what I just did the last couple of minutes. You can see that I made several changes to that property. And whenever I want, I could go back to a significantly older version. Yeah. And you can see the image I uploaded is not no longer in this version. So if I would click save now, I would overwrite this version, but I'm going back to the latest version. And you can see the images back there. So you have a full, fully fledged versioning in here. And that uh, cur currently is pretty much uh, the state of development of the management console. There will be all the other features added, um, but for now, this is it. 
If you have any questions, feel free um, to comment onto this video. Uh, if you would like to see the progress of the development of this application, uh, subscribe to the channel um, or uh, visit us on our website um, and we're happy to um, answer any questions that might already come up. Again, just as a notice, um, this is currently under development. It's scheduled to launch somewhere around May 2021. Um, with the features to build your own website, to uh, manage all your inventory, create pages, etc. I think we're on a very good track. Um, and yeah, just be patient, subscribe to the channel, we'll keep you updated. And thank you very much uh, for watching this video.